Good morning to all of you. I'm sorry that I can't be with you uh, in real person, but uh, I hope that this video recording will help you in understanding a little bit more how you can use ecosystems, business ecosystems or organizational ecosystems in order to become uh, more innovative. Let me start with a an example, uh, a story about uh, the development of ventilators in the beginning of uh, 2020 uh, in uh, the United Kingdom. And you will remember that we then had the start of the pandemic and that in the early phases of the pandemic, quite a few people had strong respiratory problems and needed to have a ventilator. In the United Kingdom, uh, there was an identification of a worst case scenario whereby the National Health Service would need more than 90,000 mechanical ventilators to cope with patients in the ICUs. And yet in the UK, there were only about 9,000 available. You can say, well, we could produce them, but the yearly production worldwide was at that moment only about 77,000. Therefore, there was this call for arms to industry to quickly produce and actually develop first as many ventilators as possible. And you know what happened? Because of the urgency, uh, people got together and they worked in what I will call an ecosystem, a loosely coupled network of organizations that work together with each other. This is a somewhat complicated slide, but it shows actually the timeline and it shows that indeed the UK was capable of developing and producing uh, sufficient ventilators within a matter of um, three or four months. And you see how quickly uh, the production of these ventilators went up. And how did they do it? They created, as I said, an organizational ecosystem. Over 100 firms from very diverse industry sectors pivoted, collaborated, and po pooled their resources to very, very quickly innovate. The coordination was done by somebody who was in charge of a uh, large, uh, val high value manufacturing uh, capital, the large research institute, but many companies were involved. Uh, and uh, actually, they came with their own capabilities. Interesting, for example, is you may know the name of McLaren, a uh, producer of Formula One cars. Uh, you may remember that because of the pandemic, suddenly all Formula One races had, were canceled and the company didn't know what to do. But you know, if you are in Formula One, you try to improve the car from one race to the other race in two weeks. They're very good in very rapid development. So the rapid development was done uh, by McLaren. Uh, but then, of course, of course, they needed to produce. So companies like Airbus, GKN Airspace and Rolls-Royce came together uh, for uh, manufacturing scale. And also the Ford Motor Company came together and lots of other uh, companies, including Siemens Healthineers, which was very well placed to help this effort uh, to get the regulatory approval approval for these ventilators. So the the the, the whole challenge in of in producing uh, ventilators and first of all developing them also the whole challenge was done in less than two or three months because people work together not with big contracts not with uh, long uh, negotiations with each other, but just let's do it and let's work together. And that really is what ecosystems, business ecosystems are all about. Now, we all work in ecosystems. When you think about it, you probably work with other people uh, with whom you may not have necessarily a contract. There is the government, there are regulators, there are banks with whom you work. You always work in an ecosystem. But in this case that I just told you about, this ventilator challenge, it was about how do we use ecosystems to quickly innovate? And that's what brings me now to this slide about innovators. What are common pitfalls that we have very often in innovation management? First of all, that we really don't understand what the user needs or when you work uh, for the benefit of society, what the society needs, that you don't have a deep understanding of what the value is that you can create. The second common pitfall is that 
we know what we want to do, but we don't have access to the necessary technology. Or we have insufficient resources. We don't have the people to do it. We don't have the capital that needs to be invested to be able to innovate. But one of the most common pitfalls of innovators is that they want to do it alone. They want to protect themselves. They want to keep that intellectual property. But of course, that slows you down and actually makes it a lot more costly to innovate. The benefits of what I try to illustrate with this ventilator challenge in the United Kingdom is that you can work together in a loosely coupled network of partners, or I call that an ecosystem like what we use in biology, where uh, big animals, small animals, plants live in symbiosis with each other, help each other. Uh, so it's a little bit similar to that biological ecosystem where different species needs, need each other. A business ecosystem is an ecosystem where people work together, uh, complement each other, bring their own capabilities together. And we want to do that in this particular case to innovate fast. Because that's what you in, actually in waste man management have to do. That is, you have to think about how do I move from a social good, a good idea of what I want to do, to actually real social change? How do you make that change happen in a very short period of time? We all have some capabilities, but we don't have all the capabilities that are needed to tackle that issue of waste management. We want to pool our capabilities. And by the way, we will together learn from each other and we will gradually build up what I call sometimes ecosystem goods or ecosystem knowledge that we share together with each other. You, of course, have no time. So you want to avoid duplication. You don't want to work in silos and each of you develop their own uh, approach. You want to be very flexible because we don't have all the solutions for waste management. And as you can see, the last two bullet points I have here, it is about going as fast as possible. You only have two years. That is very short. You want to scale up very, very quickly. And we know that with ecosystems, you can scale up very quickly. Some of the big uh, high-tech companies in uh, China, like Alibaba or Tencent, have been able to scale up very rapidly because they're fully committed to work with partners to work in an ecosystem. And by the way, there is a lot of uncertainty. If we want to scale up in two years to um, uh, in, th in this business of waste management, there is a lot of uncertainty. And it's always better to share that uncertainty, to work together with each other. The challenge I'm going to throw to you is your organization always works in a context and operates in a multiple and probably in multiple ecosystems. And pe perhaps you're not even aware of it. The challenge that I will throw at you and that I hope you will do as an exercise later on is how can you optimize the use of these ecosystems to innovate and create and deliver value in the face of, yeah, VUCA, volatility, complexity, um, ambiguity and uncertainty, right? I suggest you do the following exercise with your team. First of all, try to draw, like I suggest here in this uh, diagram, Try to draw your ecosystem. You see your own organization, but who are all the other partners that uh, you work together? And you will see that some of them are not even directly linked to you, but perhaps they're sort of in a second uh, tier uh, uh, supplier or second tier customer that actually is working with you. And by the way, don't draw a hub and spoke network. You are probably not in the middle of the ecosystem. It's a little bit like this uh, graph here that I have suggested. And then once you have that graph, you have to ask yourself four questions. One, what can I do better by working together with others? What is the better value proposition? What can I do more by working together with others? Secondly, who do I need to work with me to realize that value for society or realize Realize that value for your customer. What's the type of partner that you need? And you see that I suggested here four or five different partners. Thirdly, 
What's their contribution going to be? What do I want from them? And fourthly, how do I convince them to work with me? What's in it for them? Those are the four questions that you have to answer once you have drawn your ecosystem, as I said in uh, my previous slide. And then, of course, you can start thinking about, I know my ecosystem. I know what the values I can create. I know whom I want to have in there. I know what they will bring. I know what they will get out of it. Then there are six steps to kickstart the value capturing in your ecosystem. The first one is don't try to control other people. Respect that they are your peers, that they are your partners. Demonstrate that you really believe in the concept of an ecosystem. This is not a very tightly controlled supply chain. This is not a very strongly controlled group of people that work for you. There are people that work with you, together with you, demonstrate that you believe in the concept of an ecosystem. Secondly, co-opt your uh, foundation uh, partners. And what is a foundation partner? It's somebody who can tell you what the value is that you really uh, want to create. What do you do want to do with waste management? Have you actually a real good insight in what you need to do? Do you have somebody who can tell you what you need to do? That's what I would call a foundation partner. You need to have a foundation customer or a foundation partner, and you have to make sure that you have one in your uh, uh, ecosystem. Thirdly, make sure that you have some kind of a roadmap. Where are we going? It doesn't have to be really detailed. Obviously, we are going to innovate. We will develop new ideas, new approaches, new solutions. It is about innovation and there is always uncertainty. A roadmap will perhaps not be very detailed, but like in the UK ventilator challenge, we knew that we needed to have ventilators uh, to cope with people who were in ICUs and who had respiratory problems. And we had more or less a roadmap of how to get there develop and share that roadmap with your partners. Communicate, and that's number four, the value of joining. What's in that for them? Tell them, make it clear for them what's in it, what, what's in it for them. Make it also easy for your partners to uh, join uh, the, the, the ecosystem. Uh, lower the entry barriers. Uh, don't make it too expensive to join. Make it easy in terms of organization uh, to join the ecosystem. Uh, that's uh, what you really have to do, shrink the entry barriers. And then sometimes it's very good to look for partners who bring their own ecosystems. Uh, is it possible to find a partner who has already good relationships with other people, uh, with other uh, partners? And so enrich your um, ecosystem by working together with uh, partners who have their own smaller ecosystems. But it's really about making sure that you provide leadership, but leadership without controlling. And that leads me to the next slide where I basically say, how are we going to work together? This is not about, as I said, control and commands. This is about motivating your partners to work with each other. If you work currently in silos and you have to convince partners in other silos to work with you, they will not like you to tell them what to do. What they really want you to do is to um, ensure that they are convinced by you. And that's the reason why I have on this slide a few advices about how to uh, sort of lead an ecosystem. First of all, you have to rea realize that you are going to lead beyond your own organization. You're going to lead people who don't report to you, who are not in your organization. And how do you do that? By building consensus and by ensuring that a wide group of peers take ownership of most of the decisions you will make very often together. You will have to become a very active networker. Uh, because it's not by telling people what to do that they will actually uh, align with you. You have to convince them. 
you have to be a trusted source of knowledge and information, and perhaps of information that others in the ecosystem haven't spotted yet. You need to demonstrate what is called often soft power. Your power is not because you have the right to tell people what to do, but it's because you can listen to people, you can convince them, you can sort of move them in the right direction. You have to invest in your soft power. And then let's uh, face it, there will always be uh, tensions in an ecosystem. People will not necessarily always agree with you. So there will be, um, as I said, tensions, there will be disagreements. You have to embrace that diversity. You will have to embrace the dilemmas, overcome those dilemmas, but never forget, if you're leading an ecosystem, what is the overarching identity? What is the goal of the ecosystem? I can tell you, when we went back to the ventilator challenge in the United Kingdom, the companies like Formula One, McLaren, Ford, uh, Rolls-Royce, all these big companies, they have big egos. Uh, they had to work together. That could only, only be done because the leader of that ecosystem knew exactly what the identity was and what was the goal for the ecosystem. Last advice. It's about ecosystems, not ego systems. Ego systems is where you try to put yourself in front. It's about ecosystem. You're a part of a network of partners. Thank you very much.